and welcome to Chad, although that's Cameroon and this is Chad. I suppose that's one of the things we Australians can sometimes have a hard time getting to terms with, that is seeing another country from your country. Anyway, Chad. Chad gets its name from Lake Chad, which is just a few kilometres that way. Lake Chad itself gets its name from the Canary word meaning lake. So if you're wanting to be precious about it, Lake Chad is actually called Lake Lake. Go figure. Now Chad has three broad geographic regions. Up in the north is the Saharan region, in the middle is the Sahelian, and in the south is the tropical region. And here in Enjamena we're in the Sahelian region, which is moderately fertile and right now in the wet season very, very green. Now the French, being the French, weren't particularly good colonisers. They came here around about the 1920s and about the only thing they gave a damn about in Chad was the ability to grow cotton. They didn't really care about the people, they didn't do any economic development here and they left the north pretty much to its own. So there's no real infrastructure or governance left behind when the French finally got the hell out of here and Chad got its independence in the 1960s. So there are about 16 million people in Chad, about 1.6 million of those are in the capital and Jemena. The numbers are a bit loose like they usually are in a lot of parts of Africa. So Chad is about 50% Muslim and about 45% Christian. It has about 350 languages like a lot of countries in Africa, showing its multilinguistic background and its multi-ethnic heritage. It's the second lowest on the Human Development Index. It's struggled with economic growth because more or less consistently since independence, it's been in one form or another of a civil war, or it's had the overflow of the war in Sudan coming over the borders into Chad as well, as it is today. This is the uh, National Square. Little known fact, if you look at the flag, Chad and Romania have two of the closest resembling flags that there are. If you put Chad and Romania next to each other, they're almost impossible to distinguish, except the Chadian flag has a slightly goldy yellow and a slightly deeper red. But apart from that, they're basically identical. The statue here obviously commemorates the freedom from slavery, like many of the parts of Africa, celebrating their independence with the freedom from slavery imposed by the Europeans, especially the French. Je juste explique l'équipe d'Australie a gagné contre la France. Coupe de monde de femmes, qu'est-ce que tu penses? C'est bon. Everyone here wants to see the French lose. <laughs> Merci. Uh, Malik has to come with me when I do the videoing because he's got to make sure that I don't take a photo of the presidential palace in case I use that for some security reason. But that's why he's here. And this is Hassan, my guide and my driver. Hassan, how did you feel when Australia beat France in the World Cup women's football match today? Yeah. Fun little formation called Elephant Rock. Bit of an adventure getting here. Pretty cool to look at though. So if you were thinking, Chad, it'd be surrounded by desert and dust, well it is if you go a lot further north up into the Saharan region. But this is the Sahelian region a bit further south and it's also wet season. So it's damn green. Not quite what I was thinking for Chad. But boy, does it remind you that this could be, in theory, a very beautiful country with a lot of really interesting tourism, a lot of places to come and visit, if only it got its politics right. <laughs>